forest school is an approach to learning that takes place in nature where where children are in charge of their learning through unstructured free play yeah so in this definition nature is the first educator the child is the second and the forest school leader or the teacher or the parent is third now why did we say nature is the first educator and child is second let me give you an example so this is my pamangkin debbie let's say you want a child to grow in the area of young know, physical development uh so when we say nature is a teacher can you spot it here kung saan ang nature yes yes yung puno yung puno po yun. <laughs> kung wala yung puno walang aakitan hindi ma-develop ang muscles or yung sense of balance second we said that the child is the teacher eh, hindi ba siya ang student or yung learner true but when a child climbs a tree she also teaches herself how to learn dahil siya ang umaakyat hindi si teacher <laughs> she teaches herself ah hanggang dito lang pala yung kaya kong akyatin ah kailangan ko pala kumapit para hindi ako mahulog and so on so asan si forest school leader don asan si teacher don nasa tabi ensuring that the child is safe and allowing the child to develop her body you know that that's why some parents pag nag inquire sila ng sessions ano ba yung mga activities nyo to be honest wala po akong masagot kasi na, depende po yun sa bata what they want o, to explore or discover that day so i am sorry sa mga parents na naghahanap po ng lessons or activities but we do not have that what a forest school leader provides are opportunities and experiences. Now, forest school, for those who have heard it for the first time, it is not a new trend, but it is actually steeped in history. In the early 1900s, yung forest school foundations were laid through yung mga youth camp and yung mga outdoor skills. I think ito yung time ng mga Girl Scout, Boy Scout. In the 1950s, outdoor learning and play have been an important part of the early years in Scandinavia. And in the 1990s, the forest school began to emerge in the UK. So, alam nyo naman po siguro, ang Scandinavian countries, they are top-notch in terms of education system and you know for them to promote forest school kahit na freezing yung weather doon sa kanila you know they must be doing something right so sabi ko why not bring it here in the philippines diba? so now um let us go let us proceed to the first part of um our Lesson, lesson talaga, no? <laughs> the forest school principles. Our approach, what is the approach to learning? So forest school principles. Um, it First of all, it's for everyone. So we do not discriminate it regardless of your age or your location. Nasa Dubai ka man, nasa Qatar, nasa Pangasinan. It's for you. It's for your child. And regard, regardless of what schooling um, your child is having right now, whether homeschooled, unschooled, wild school, Reggio Emilia, Waldorf, Charlotte Mason, Montessori, and so on, you can still forest school. And there are no barriers to disability. In fact, meron po akong naging student na meron siyang low spectrum na ADHD, I think. So, you know, it's for everyone. Second is, it is long term. Hindi po siya one session lang. You will not see a child develop if you just send your child to forest school one time, big time. It has to be regular, kung pwede weekly, kung ikaw ang magka forest school sa anak mo, daily, kung pwede. And it happens rain or shine. It covers different seasons. Sabi nga nung isang libro, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothes. So sa Sa Pilipinas, di ba, maulan sa atin. So, kung umuulan, push pa rin ang mga sessions natin. Baunan mo na lang ng kapote yung anak mo. Okay? 
So another principle, why forests or why nature? Being around nature calms the mind and decreases the stress. Alam nyo yan, makakita ka lang ng puno minsan, parang <sighs> kumakalma ka na. <laughs> Why forest? You have a lot of space to discover and explore. And it's, uh, yung tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, it calms the mind, it decreases stress. You know what? Yung proficiency ng knowledge or ng skill, it best happens when you are in a safe and positive environment. What else? Nature provides a play space with a lot of resources. Or yung tinatawag natin na loose parts or loose materials. Example would be yung stick na mapupulot ng bata sa gubat. Because, um, you know, a stick is not limited to its purpose. A stick can be a gun, it can be a sword, it can be a wand, it can be a boat, or it can be, you know, whatever. The possibilities are endless. So when they are um, experiencing these loose parts, yung creativity ng bata, yung imagination niya is being supported. And uh, finally, you know, why nature? Simply because, because it's okay to make a mess. Wala kang liligpitin na kalat. Agree po ba kayo doon? <laughs> okay. Another principle, how do we use it? So in forest school, a relationship is formed between the learner and the natural world. So they learn to value and care for their playground. So when they grow old, they become environmentally responsible. And they also become aware of the impact of their choices in the future. Uh, next principle is that it is uh, learner-centered. So, uh, gusto ko pong sabihin that we are focused on outcomes, not grades. Kaya po wala pong grading system sa forest school. We do not give your child A, B, C, D or 100%, 90% because we are focused on the outcomes, on the holistic developed child and the sense of community na experience niya habang nasa forest and the meaningful relationship with the with nature so unlike traditional schools where they are taught how to think or feel in forest school children come up with their own solutions and answers so that fosters problem solving and creativity and most importantly play Ang paglalaro is vital to a child's learning. Okay? Another principle is risks. So children are encouraged to take risks appropriate to the environment and themselves. Ano po ba yung importance ng risk? Or an, ano ba yung nangyayari kapag walang risk? Hindi ko alam bakit yung mga magulang ngayon, sometimes they are too protective of their um, children. Isa po yun sa mga um, sinagot ninyo doon sa survey sa in-email ka previously. One, some of you have mentioned ang challenge nyo is you are overprotective. Now, let me tell you that if you protect your child too much, hindi nyo siya in-expose sa uh, um, uh, risky situations, they become clumsy and they are prone to accidents and injuries kasi hindi nila hindi sila komportable sa kanilang katawan and they are not trained to listen to what their bodies are telling them what else they will not learn how to assess risks and manage it during if they sorry if they do not learn how to assess risks and manage it during play how much more in real life so they are exposing themselves to reckless decisions you know, kapag nag-fail sila sa school, they may resort to stress eating or kapag nabuli sila, they may not be able to fend themselves or when they are pressured into sex, drug, and alcohol, they might give in. They are, if they're always afraid to take on new challenges, they become timid, reluctant, prone to stress, anxiety, and phobia. So, in other words, it's more dangerous for your child if they are not exposed to risky play. Kasi yun po yung mga dangers. 
Okay, so ano po ba ang ibig sabihin natin when we talk about risky play? It's exposing them to, you know, great height. Kaya, uh, you know, allow them to climb the tree. Uh, another risk, another form of risky play is uh, great speed. Yung tumatakbo, tumatalon, kung saan saan. Or uh, na, another type of risky play is exposing them to dangerous tools. So if you have seen forest kindergarten in, um, in the Western countries, they allow their kids to use knives para magwittle or para uh, magcarve. Yan. Another is exposing them to dangerous elements, which means, um, ano ba yung mga dangerous elements? Sa tubig. Kasi ang uh, possibility that they might drown or pag nasa bangin. So exposing them to that one. Another form of risky play is when they get lost. So kunyari sa gubat, tatago-taguan sila. You know, it's also possible na hindi na nila mahanap yung daan nila pabalik. And yung mock aggression or yung Insan tutulak-tulak lang sila, ganyan magtutulak-tulakan sila, uh, pero they are still having fun. Let me tell you this, the world needs them desperately. Children who are exposed to risks, why? Listen to this and take, na take down notes if you can. Risk takers are the bedrock of innovation and leadership. Let me say it again for emphasis. Risk takers are the bedrock of innovation and leadership. Ang bilis na ang panahon ngayon. You know, um, the jobs that are available is, <sighs> hindi na yung inaaral natin sa school ngayon minsan, it doesn't even apply anymore. So allow them to take risks so that um, they can face the future. You can face the future with confidence. And uh, the last uh, forest school principle is that it is being run by a qualified forest school leader. It's also first, the leader is also first aid certified. But as we go along, you know, I, I will show you how you can apply these principles with your kids or with your students. Para kahit walang certification, um, you'll be able to reap the benefits of forest school. Do, 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 do.